showcase in our final session of the day. Uh, the performer showcase is put on by the Southeastern Wisconsin Virtual Youth Services. Woo, SOE! Uh, sponsored by the SOE Library Systems, which include uh, Arrowhead Library System, Bridges Library System, Kenosha County Library System, Lakeshore's Library System, Milwaukee County Federated Library System, and Monarch Library Systems. Lots of library systems. Uh, my name is Caitlin Schaefer. I'm the Youth Services Librarian at the Oconomowoc Public Library, and I'm going to be your MC for this session. All attendees will be muted, webcams turned off, and chat disabled so you can relax and view the demonstrations without any interruptions or distractions from um, other participants. If you have any problems or questions, however, please submit those in the Q&A box, which can be found either at the lower portion of your screen if you're on a desktop or laptop computer, or possibly up at the top if you are on a mobile device like a uh, phone or a tablet. All sessions are gonna be recorded and made available on YouTube for a limited time. You'll find the YouTube link to that in your program booklet. Um, for your convenience, in the chat box, we'll post a link to a view only copy, copy of the program booklet. Please note the viewable copy is only available during these performer showcase sessions. The recordings, however, will be available from November 22nd, 2020 until June 1st, 2021. The link, like mentioned, is listed in your booklet. All right, housekeeping done. Our three performers for this hour are Duke Otherwise, Coral Conant uh, Gillis, and Milwaukee Steve's Magical Juggling Show. Each performer will have up to 10 minutes to provide a sample performance and then up to five minutes to answer your questions. You can submit your questions by typing them into the Q&A box and we will then read them to the performer so they can answer them for you. Let's begin this showcase session. Our first performer is Duke Otherwise. Duke performs an interactive musical show filled with clever lyrics, excellent musician, musicianship, tap dancing, laughter, and celebration. Uh, Duke shows a genuine love for sharing his music that translates into an enjoyable, engaging show for all ages according to some librarian named Caitlin Schaefer, who has a blurb on his website. Don't know her, never heard of her. If you are following along in your booklet, Duke's information is on page 18. Take it away, Duke. Yes, I'm Duke Otherwise, and I love to inspire kids to use their creative gifts of their minds. I do that through music, creative writing, tap dancing, movement, and lots of word play. This song I'm gonna play for you here is a song I wrote with a good friend of mine. And we started with the idea of a little baby sitting at their high chair, eating sloppily with their food. It's always a, a great scene. And we started with that, and then we added some foods and some animals, and we made a lot of word play combinations. So I want you to listen really carefully, and maybe throughout the song, you can write down your favorite combination and put it in the messages, or maybe at the end, you can uh, share it with me. Here we go, listen carefully. Well, I know an antelope who likes to eat cantaloupe, a beagle who eats bagels, an eagle who eats eagles, a peacock who eats peas, a pecan eating pecanese. Well, I know an elephant fond of fondue, but I never met anyone who eats like you. About that baby. Here's some more combinations. Well, I know a parrot who likes to eat carrots. A pop, a pop, and parrot who never wants to share it. A muffin eating puffin. A turkey who stuffs himself with stuffing. Well, I know a turtle who loves to eat tofu. But I never met anyone who eats like you. Clap those hands like that and maybe dance. Here we go. Our dinner parties are quite the oven. Hundreds of species in one circus tent. We chew the fat and pick every bone. Knowing you, you'll feel right at home. Well, I know a chicken who likes to eat chicken peas. A kiwi who eats kiwis and monkfish eating monkeys. A mole who digs his mole. A bowl who craves some ravioli. I know a cow who's mad about Mushu, but I never met anyone who eats like you. Clap those hands and dance. Well, we eat like pigs, cause some of us are. We 
We eat all the dishes, then eat all the flowers. We slurp and we slobber while munching our food. Still there ain't a beast who feasts like you. Well, I know a bullfrog. Full of guara, a koala who eats quinoa, a cobra who eats coleslaw, an iguana with lasagna who always gets some anya, a gecko who loves guac, a taco loving croc. Well, I know what fish who likes to eat fish. A gator hot for tater tot, a trout who's hooked on sauerkraut, a plum crazy kangaroo, a chocoholic cockatoo too. I died in the wild, the barnyard and zoo. That's my song, Eats Like You. And I offer three different programs for this next summer. Um, one of them, of course, is a live in-person performance. The other one would be a live stream performance where I would do it either from here in my living room or come to your library and do the live stream from there. The other one would be, uh, which has had a lot of success this past year, was my pre-recorded program. Now my pre-recorded program, I'm about to show you a sample of that. It, it's so much fun because there's a lot of fun edits, uh, we bring in some other characters, um, lots of fun things on the screen, and it's really just clean and fun, professionally shot, professionally edited. I bring in a couple of musician friends, and that's it's, and the best thing about it is it's very affordable for everybody. I make that a little bit cheaper than my other options uh, since I don't actually have to be there. So uh, I'm going to show you some samples of that. And the other thing about this, at the very end of this video that you're about to see is my uh, music video for one of my songs, and you'll see how I've gone to another location. So, um, and the last thing I'll say before we show this clip is I also offer a holiday pre-recorded program, which if you're looking for anything in the next few weeks, I'm finishing that up this week, and I'm offering that at a really, really low rate, um, because I don't understand everybody's got different budgets and everything going on right now, so please contact me, and I can get the holiday program to you within the next couple of weeks. So, enjoy the video, and I'll be back to answer some more questions is I also offer a holiday and adventure this white wishes girl from the next few months. I'm thinking that up to year. So Anna, she's a renaissance girl who can do most everything. Oh, a virtuosic wildness. What will the in ventriloquist? A valedictorian jumped Victoria Falls. Oh, so Anna's a gifted dame. She can do it all, but say her name. This is what she says. She says, my name is Sawana, not Sawana. Sawana sounds uncivilized. Grants a Scrooge, Max is mini, mini's huge, but he has no friends. 
Misty's clear, Wade can't swim, Rob's a giver, Victor never wins, Destiny has no luck, Brooke can't flow, flow is stuck, Eileen never bends. In our class there's no shame, we all have misfit names. Miss Gilmer is the lady who teaches us. Miss Gilmer is exactly who she says she is. Miss Gilmer is the lady who teaches us. Dusty's clean, Kurt's polite. Rusty sheen, Violet's white. Ruby's dim heroes, not gutsy. Hopes forlorn and grace is klutzy. Taylor cannot sew. Candy's bitter. Chase is stalled, Homer's no hitter, Harry's bald, Art's a mess, less is more, Hunter is an herbivore, Tanner's leather is foe. In our class there's no shame, we all have misfit names. Miss Gilmer is the lady who teaches us, Miss Gilmer is exactly who she says she is, Miss Gilmer is the lady who teaches us. In our class there's no shame, we all have misfit names. Miss Gilmer is the lady who teaches us, Miss Gilmer is exactly who she says she is. Now melody and harmony won't sing for us. Go! Listen to them not singing. Kinda stinky, Ernest is too faced. Robin doesn't like how earthworms taste. Miss Nomer is exactly who she says she is. Miss Nomer is the lady who teaches us. Miss Nomer is the lady who teaches us. Miss Nomer is the lady who So yeah, that, that is a sample of my pre-recorded video. As you can see, there's a, a lot of room for um, different edits and different characters to come into the show and, and also for like text to be on the screen and all that, which just enhances the whole thing. And as I said before, that's a, a much more affordable option uh, to do the pre-recorded and it, and it saves on any risk of any connectivity issues. And um, I also want to say like, I'm really uh, flexible with, with fees and with uh, live performances and all that, with everything going on, I want to be, make sure I'm very flexible with everybody and uh, just do what's best for all. So um, with that, if anybody has any questions for me, I'd love to answer them. All right, thank you so much, Duke. Um, no questions so far, although we did have somebody mention, Crystal mentioned, Duke is awesome. One of my favorite acts to have in the library. So. Oh, right. Glowing, uh, glowing recommendation there. I can second that. Had Duke do several things. Quite the fan club at our library. Um, oh, and Katie also said that Duke is awesome. So okay, thank you. More, just more, <laughs> no questions. Just glowing, glowing reviews. Okay. Um, I did. I did have a quick question for you, Duke. Though, um, just in case some libraries are interested. Uh, are you are you okay with working with like a group of libraries together? So say a whole group of libraries wanted to work together to to book you um, for performances. Is that something you're willing to kind of work with? Oh, for sure. Yep, yep. I'm open to all ideas and, and whatever is best for everybody. Like teaming together like that 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 has always worked. Even when we're doing the live shows before, you know, doing the block bookings is helpful for everybody. So that has not changed and definitely will not change. So. Awesome. I'm checking to see if there are any other questions here. None so far. Uh, just a for fun question while we see if anybody else has anything kind of rolling in. Uh, can you give us three words that describe you or your best performance? Ooh, wow. Um, probably spontaneous is a good one. 
Um, every show is different because I ask for a lot of volunteers um, throughout the shows. And, and also like, I have a couple songs where people can contribute to the, the songs uh, by offering suggestions. And that can also be done virtually as well. I've had that in the comments. I moved a little quickly here today, but uh, normally I would, I would, after that first song, I would uh, respond to the, the comments and, and talk with that. Um, spontaneous, I guess a lot of energy, energy, energetic, I guess is the second word. And um, caring, I, I love kids. I love kids and families like crazy. So um, I love spending time with them before and after the shows. Awesome. Uh, we did have a question roll in from Maria saying we love Ebenezer Duke. Uh, do you have any other holiday shows maybe in the works? Um, no other holiday shows in the works right now, but for this year that Ebenezer Duke is available, like I said, as a pre-recorded option and, and still possibly even uh, a live in person if anybody's doing any of that socially distanced, um, that could possibly work. But that one I'm offering at a really big discount and I'm, I'm, I have it in the edit room right now and it's looking really good. Um, so that one, that's all I have for right now, but I might think about something again for next year to have a second option. Awesome. Cool. Well, nothing else rolling in. So I think we are all good. Thank you so much, Duke. Great. Thanks so much. Have a good day, everybody. You too. Okay. Do, 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 do. So our second performer today is Coral Cunant Gillis. Um, she is a storyteller, naturalist, and who brings nature and animal tales to life through wonder, curiosity, imagination, and empathy. If you are following along in your booklet, Coral's information is on page 11. All yours, Coral. Hi, I don't seem to be able to start my video. Oh, there we go. Hey. There I am. <laughs> Hi, I'm Coral Conant Gillis, storytelling naturalist. I tell stories and most of those come with a hands-on nature connection. I also lead workshops. My workshops focus on crafting and telling our own stories. I also have workshops that focus on using storytelling as a means to build community and deepen empathy. My programs are for early childhood, elementary, teens, tweens, and adults, and librarians. I want to start by sharing a little snippet of a family story with you. This is an original story, one I created myself. Little Fox was so excited. Today was the day that he was in charge of catching his own lunch. He trotted through the forest. You can trot with him if you'd like. And he called out, lunch, lunch, who wants to be my lunch? No one answered. He trotted a little more, and you can trot with him. And he called a little louder. Lunch, lunch, who wants to be my lunch? Still, no one answered. He trotted one more time, and I think this time he's really going to need your help. He called out a little louder. Call with him. Lunch, lunch, who wants to be my lunch? <gasps> Still, no one answered. Little Fox trotted on down to the wetland thinking, if no one's gonna be my lunch, how am I gonna catch my lunch? And then he saw American Bittern. American Bittern is a bird about this big with long streaks of brown and cream, with long legs and a long neck, and a long, sharp, pointy beak. Little Fox said, Bittern, how do you catch your lunch? Oh, it's easy, she said. I stand here on the edge of the wetland on one leg with my neck and beak pointed up to the sky. So I look like a reed. And then I wiggle just a little. So I look like a reed at the edge of the wetland but the whole time I keep my eyes pointed down. And if I see something tasty, like a fish, I <laughs> snatch it right up out of the water. All right, thought little fox, I can try that. So he pulled himself up onto two legs. Whoa, that was already pretty tricky for a fox. And then he took his third leg and he lifted, whoa, sploosh, right 
into the wetland. <laughs> Thanks, Bittern, but I think I need something where I can keep all four paws down. And Little Fox trotted on. You can trot with him if you'd like. Soon, Little Fox saw Frog. Frog, how do you catch your lunch? It's easy, he said. I just sit here very still and very quietly, and I watch for something tasty, like a mayfly. And when I see it, I stick out my tongue and I grab it. Okay, I can give that a shot, thought Little Fox. He gave his tongue a few practice flicks. Go on, give your tongue a few practice flicks. And if you want to hear how that story ends, you'll need to tune in to one of my programs. That's an original story, one I created, but I also tell a lot of folk tales. Most of my folk tales are adaptations that really speak to who I am and um, what I'm trying to create. But I do have one folk tale that stays pretty clear to the source. It's a Margaret Reed McDonald story. It's one that she collected and adapted from folk tales in Alabama and Virginia. I tell it with permission, permission for live audiences, in-person, virtual, and recorded stories. I wanna share just a snippet of that with you. Pickin' peas, put em in my pail. Plink, pickin' peas, put em in my pail. Plink. Little girl picked all the biggest, fattest, juiciest peas. She left the wee little peas and the medium-sized peas for tomorrow and the day after that. She picked all the way down the first row, turned the corner, and started picking the second row. You can sing her song with her if you'd like. Picking peas, put them in my pail. Plink. Picking peas, put them in my pail. Plink. It was then that she started to feel like somebody was following her. She listened real hard. And she heard, Picking peas, land on my knees. <gasps> Who's that picking my peas? Oh, I bet it's that mangy rabbit. I bet that rabbit's coming along behind me and picking all my wee little peas and all my medium-sized peas so I won't have any more peas tomorrow and the day after that. What am I gonna do about that rabbit? I know, if I hurry down this row and turn back to the row I came from, I bet I can sneak up on him. And so she did, quickly and quietly, she hurried down the row, eked around the corner, and there at the end of the row was that rabbit. She ran up behind him and grabbed him. Whoa! Rabbit, have you been eating my peas? Rabbit, what's that you were singing? Um, ah, uh, picking roots, land on my foots. No, rabbit. That's not what you were singing. What were you really singing? Um, picking peas, land on my knees. Ooh, rabbit, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do with you. I'm gonna take you home and put you in a box till pea picking season is over. So you can't eat any more of my wee little peas and my medium sized peas. And if you want to hear how that story ends, you'll need to tune into one of my programs. Both of those stories are examples of family stories. I love family stories. Most kids and adults do. But one group, you may not be surprised, the teens and the tweens, they don't latch onto family stories the way the rest of us do. They want something more. They want something deeper. So I do use family stories with them when I'm leading workshops on telling folk tales. I also use, um, I also have workshops where I use storytelling to build community and deepen empathy. 
And I have storytelling workshops where I teach personal and family stories, how to gather and tell those stories for teens, tweens, adults, and librarians. But when I tell stories to teens, I tell them stories that are a little more raw, a little more emotional. And I want to share just a snippet of one with you so that you have a sense for how that tone and mood can change. This is a story called The Black Kitty. It is my adaptation of a folktale that comes from Poland and Germany. It combines a few folktales into one that speaks to me. For the third night, Gabe walked down that dark, dank, musty hallway. It was pitch black, but by now he knew the route well. As he walked, the fear built inside his chest. He got to the end of the hallway where the door was to the familiar closet. He tucked himself inside, back in the corner, and placed his hand on the back of the black kitty. For just a moment, their bodies relaxed. But as the clock grew closer to midnight, the tension rose. They listened for strange sounds like the night before. They looked for odd lights like they'd seen before, but nothing came. And as the clock eked closer and closer to midnight, that calm took on an eerie stillness. The fear inside them bubbling, but still they sat and waited for what was to come. Thank you. I am Coral Conant Gillis, Storytelling Naturalist, and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you very much. And thank you, Coral. Awesome, awesome. I was getting some chills down my spine. All right, so we did have a couple of uh, questions pop in for you here. Um, Kimberly says, I noticed that your description in our booklet also includes puppets and music. Do you include these elements in all your shows? So that description comes from one of the click categories that you, it was a, just a checkbox. Um, so there is, there's singing in many of my stories, just like the, the pick and peas ditty. Um, there's not puppetry, it, well, okay, there's puppetry occasionally in my stories, um, but that I am much more of a storyteller than I am a musician or a, a puppeteer. But, you know, I bring in props here and there, and I definitely include songs here and there. Awesome, thank you. Um, Kimberly also wanted to know, do your shows work for a group of all preschoolers? So like some children with parents and some possibly with daycare providers? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so meaning like, yeah, so meaning more of a teacher-led group versus a family-led group. Yes, absolutely. My programs start at two years old. Sometimes it's daycares, sometimes it's libraries where they're coming with caregivers. Um, I do all of it. The, my, I love the programs where I can bring, and we're not doing this right now because of COVID, but where we can bring the preschoolers to the nursing homes. I do a lot of intergenerational programs with memory care units and preschoolers. And those are so beautiful. I can't wait to be doing more of those again. Oh, fantastic. That does sound wonderful. Um, just a quick question too for you, just more on the kind of um, booking end. Um, are you open to libraries collaborating with, e with other libraries to book either virtual or in-person performances? Absolutely. Excellent. And are your performance recordings um, do you allow libraries to post those on their website or social media after the performance? Or is that something you would prefer or just arranged with the libraries themselves? Right, so that's something that we would talk about and figure out how that worked into timing and contracts and things like that. Um, I've definitely done virtual shows and am happy to continue doing virtual shows. And those can be up for different lengths of time depending on what we work out. Wonderful. Thank you. Let's see if there's any other questions. None so far. 
what's one up here? I'll ask a quick question just in case anybody else is working on theirs. Um, what is what is your favorite story to tell? Grandmother Oak. No. Uh, I did not, this is um, a story of my own creation, so you won't necessarily know it. Um, and I didn't tell it today because it's a very seasonal story that goes, it's appropriate now from fall through spring, but it's not a summer focused story. Wonderful. Okay, well, I think that about wraps that up. Thank you so much, Coral. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, whoa, somebody, we just popped up last minute question sliding in there. Uh, <laughs> are you able to offer any of your nature activities virtually? Yes. So it's different. Um, when I do the nature activities virtually, I often focus on a craft and then also like little videos that help engage the curiosity of the kids and give parents ideas for how they can go out into nature and do some of that exploration. I find that a lot of parents want to be out there, but they have no idea where to start. And if I can give them some of those snippets, they can be a lot more successful outside exploring with their kids. Excellent. All right, well then thank you. Take two, Coral. <laughs> have a great rest of your day. Thank you. All right. Okay. So our third and final performer for this session is Milwaukee Steve's Magical Musical Juggling Show. Uh, Steve combines his juggling skills with his love of music into a captivating performance for all ages. And if you are following along in your booklet, Steve's information is on page 29. All right, Steve, we're ready for you. Okay, here I come. Da -da -da -da. Hello, hello, hello. Let me get this down there. Okay, I'm Milwaukee Steve. Oh, wait, let me make sure you can see. Um, yes, we're all good to go. Hello, everybody. I started out as a juggler at the Renaissance Fair way back when it was still King Richard's Fair. And um, then I got into music. I started teaching early childhood. And I put all, all together for an act for young children. I've been doing it for libraries for about 10 years. So when I usually start, I kind of start with a um, kind of a one man band thing. I start out in silence and I, I one instrument at a time I take out of my suitcase. I got bells and I got a bass drum and a harmonica and a little duck call. And um, I start the whole thing, even with volunteers in complete silence. And I find with that way, the kids get very tuned in works out really, really well. So then I introduce myself and we do a little song. I'm gonna do one of the many, many songs that I do. It's Tingaleo. Tingaleo, come back along the way. Well, actually, this is a banjo lately. I'm gonna play this with my very special ukulele. Oh, this, wait till you see this. This is my special one. I saved it just for you. Oh, yeah. So, I even have a special case for it that I just got. Ooh, this is a real nice one. It's very old. Tingaling. Wait a minute. It doesn't sound so good. Oh, I know what the problem is. It's a little dirty. I gotta, uh, I, I gotta, I can clean this up. I put it in the special brand new ukulele cleaning machine here. And I get ready to turn it on. I put in some water and some soap right before the show, just in case this happened. I know this is a little awkward here. I turn it on and it's working. Can you hear it? Okay, that means it's cleaning. And when the lights blink, when they start to blink, you've got to say stop. Because so, I have to make sure I turn it off right away when the, it was, it was blinking. No, 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 blinking is like when it flashes. Right now it's, it's well, hold on a second. So you, you got to tell me to stop, stop if you see it blinking. Stop. Uh, oh my goodness. Was it blinking before? Okay. I hope I didn't leave it in too long. Oh, it's very, very clean. Oh my goodness. Look at it. And watch the paint right off of it. Who's in there? Oh my God. <laughs> there's, a, there's a fish in there. Let me see if I can still play it. How much is that fish in the ukulele? 
The one with the waggity tail. Okay, Fishy, you wait down there. I'm gonna go back to Tingle Ale on my, let's stick to the banjo lately. Here we go. Ding. I'm gonna do this one standing up. I like to stand up for some. some. Ding a leo. Come, little donkey, come. Ding a leo. Come, little donkey, come. Me donkey sleeping a nice warm bed. Me donkey, he like the color. What color rhymes with bed? Me donkey sleep in a nice warm bed. Me donkey, he like the color red. ding a -leo. Come, little donkey, come. ding a -leo. Come, little donkey, come. Me donkey, he a nice young fellow. Me donkey, he like the color. Me donkey, he a nice young fellow. Me donkey, he like the color yellow. Me ding a -leo. Come, little donkey, come, ding a -leo. Come, little donkey, come. Me donkey's friend, his name is Lulu. Me donkey, he like the color. Me donkey's friend, his name is Lulu. Me donkey, he like the color blue. Ding a -leo. Come, little donkey, come, ding a -leo. Come, little donkey, come. Me donkey babe, he never stink. Me donkey, he like the color. Me donkey babe, he never stink. Me donkey, he like the color pink. Ding a -leo. Come little donkey, come. Ding a -leo. Come little donkey, come. Me donkey, nice, he never bite. Me donkey, he likes the color. Me donkey nice, he doesn't bite. My donkey, he likes the color white. Ding a -leo. Come, little donkey, come. Ding a -leo. Come, little donkey, come, little donkey, come, little donkey, come. All right, Tingle Leo. Thank you, Tingle Leo. You did a great job. Now, when I do virtual shows, I work in puppets. Um, I've got a lot of videos with puppets in it. And um, as a matter of fact, if, if you want to see some of my videos, I have a lot of videos on Hunkered Down with Kids on YouTube. Uh, yes, so there's a fly with a tie. Thank you. <laughs> the, uh, that's when I do um, Down by the Bay. So if you want to see some of my videos, take a picture of this. And you can see more of my kids' videos on there. But um, I do a lot of juggling. As I said, I, was, I started out as a juggler. And um, indoors, juggling is a little challenging. What I did this summer, for many of my shows, I had my juggling with clips outside so I could have a lot of room to do some fancy tricks. But, oh, here we go. Woo! So, um, and I do a lot of music and storytelling inside. My last trick, here we go. This is a three-part trick. Oh, wait till you see this one. I guarantee nobody has done this trick before. Part one. Harmonica. Can you clap along? I can hear you. I can see you. Part two. Aha! Ah, that's not good enough. The best part. Part three. Now at this point, I've got kids helping me. I'm gonna use a spinning plate. And I usually have two or three kids. I get a plate spinning for them, and it's kind of fun because it starts to slow down and I have to run from this plate to the other. And I have a child holding the ukulele for me. And I say, when I put out my hand, hand me the ukulele and then run for your life. But for now, I'm gonna put it here. Now, the kids have, excuse me, the kids have plastic, and plastic plates, and I have my metal plate. Here we go, a metal plate in my head. It's going to be really good, so when it's done, I expect to hear a roaring of applause from all over the bridges system. Here we go.
So it's kind of a low energy performance. It's more to help kids relax a little bit. I gotta fix something on here. And um, we have a lot of fun. So um, let me mention a couple other things. Excuse me, I'm a little sweaty. Um, one thing is I adapt this for the age group. Uh, let's see, the last few years I've been doing play date with art at the Milwaukee Art Museum. And I do a lot of finger, we don't do juggling in that. Uh, it's with the preschoolers and even infants and toddlers. And we do a lot of finger plays with that. I teach um, art, music, and literature for young, for young children at Waukesha County Technical College. Uh, that's what my job is. And so um, I use a lot of those for that performance. And we use a lot of props and scarves and um, I get the kids really involved in that. So I can do shows for as young as, as one and two year olds if I need to. And we do a lot with rhythm sticks and with their own instruments. I also can do shows, performances, and actually workshops for older kids. So I focus on the juggling and then we do some balancing. I've got a lot of spinning plates. We break into groups. We do some beanbag tosses and we do some, um, some balance tricks. And so that's what I do with the older kids. In general, when it's a mixed audience, I mix up a lot of comedy, some magic tricks, scarf juggling, club juggling, and uh, into about a 45, 50 minute performance. And again, a lot of acting. So when we do Tingaleo live, the last verse, everybody stands up. People stand up and dance when they're wearing that colored clothes and everybody stands up and dances for the last part. And I also do some storytelling. Um, my Songs are mostly Rafi songs, and they're connected with uh, a lot of literature, like Tingaleo or Baby Beluga or Down by the Bay. And um, I do storytelling, Abi Yo Yo, Pete Seeger's version of Abi Yo Yo. I tell that story, we act it out with the ukulele, and that's a lot of fun too. So I kind of adapt as we're going um, according to the crowd that I have. Whew! All right, good night! <laughs> wait, 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 we might have questions, Steve. <laughs> Thank you so much, Steve. And I can, um, even though we didn't get a chance to see much of Steve's uh, video today, I had a virtual performance this summer that included your juggling videos and they are awesome. So can definitely vouch that those are a lot of fun. You can see a lot of them on Hunker Down with Kids. Um, but I'll, I, what I did last summer is I recorded some videos that were custom made for the libraries that hired me. So I would go in front of the library and different spots in the community and record my juggling act in there and then incorporate it. And then we did some live, some, um, I showed people how to make juggling bags out of bird seed and socks. And that was the live portion. And my final trick was live. And then um, the rest was some songs and juggling on video. Yes, it was pretty awesome. All right, if you have any questions for Steve, just go ahead and pop them into the Q&A there. In the meantime, Steve, I wanted to ask you the same question, uh, ask the other performers, and that is, would you be open to libraries collaborating with other libraries um, within a certain area to, uh, to book either virtual or in-person performances? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. No problem. So if two libraries get together and they want to um, be part of a virtual or live performance, I'd be perfectly happy with that. But it wouldn't be quite as customized to your community either if I do some pre-recorded stuff. Okay. And then also, are you, um, are you okay with uh, libraries posting any of the performances you do for them, um, like on social media or websites or anything like that? I'm happy with them posting uh, their performances, like a lot of places put it on Facebook last summer, and that I ask after a month or so that they take them down. Perfect. And it's great that you have that YouTube channel too that we can direct patrons to. That's right. And as a matter of fact, I'll probably close off some of those performances if there's songs that I'm doing in library performances as well, just to keep it uh, fresh and new for everybody. Awesome. Good to know, Steve. All right. No questions so far. You just did that good of a job explaining everything. <laughs> Let me just see if there's anything in the notes that I wanted to mention. I talked about my live video combination, older, younger stories. Yeah, I think I covered it all. <laughs> awesome. Well, do you want to maybe just to give people a chance if anybody has gathered their thoughts? Um, can you give us three words that describe uh, you and or your performance the best? Well, I think one of the things that I pride myself on is having, uh, let's see, I worked 
as a kindergarten teacher in Milwaukee for 15 years. And I'm also an uh, instructor for practicing teachers, teachers who are going to school. And um, I know that child guidance and child behavior comes first. And so that's something I pride myself on is, it's a double word, let's make it hyphenated, crowd control. So I've had as, as small as five or six kids and I handle that a little bit differently than I might with 150, 200 people, which I've done before too. And by the way, I do have my own sound system I can bring in. But um, I'm good at bringing the crowd in with me and um, without losing control. So we have a lot of fun, but I don't get it to the point that anyone feels uncomfortable with the noise level and everything. So I'm also very sensitive. I've had children in my groups before who appear to possibly be on the spectrum and I can kind of tell, then we bring it down. And then I, I, I'm perfectly fine bringing it down. Um, but that brings up my second word is energy. Is uh, I, I'm, I've got a lot of strong energy during my show and engaging. And I do that by bringing people up, volunteering. I act as surprised at the tricks that I do as this, because sometimes I am surprised when something goes so well. And we just have a lot of fun, a lot of laughter. How's that go? That's a lot more than three words. <laughs> there was a three words asterisk by it. Uh, thank you so much, Steve. Um, great information, fantastic performance, and thank you for being a part of the day. Thanks for letting me be part of your day. I look forward to meeting all of you at some point. All right, thank you so Goodbye, much. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay. So that brings us to the end of our session and the end of today's performer showcase sessions. Uh, thank you to all three of our performers um, and thank you to all the youth librarians who attended this session um, or any of the other sessions throughout the day as well. We hope you enjoyed this and the other sessions today and we hope you will join us again tomorrow at 930. We start with a brand new day with new performers for you to view and you should be able to access that again with the same link that you use to access your sessions today. So that nothing should change there. All right, well, goodbye everyone and have a fantastic evening and a big thank you to everybody who organized this for us today. Goodbye.